Good afternoon, friends. Um, and welcome to the last afternoon of Getting Grounded. Um, I think we've had different, some people have been here all four and some people have just been dropping in for one. So I give the, an introduction every time and each time it's a little bit different. So we'll try again, but um, um, just to uh, let you know, I'm up here in Shetland and I'm in the Weaving Shed Gallery. And I'll show you a little bit about this gallery. It's a nice art gallery. And um, there's two walls, actually, this is this wall that I'm facing here, this comes out and it's bigger, you can't really see. But uh, we're right on the bay. Let's see if I can let you see the little bay out there. Can you see the bay? Yeah, right on that bay. And this is my friend Ruth is here. Hi. Ruth lives down the way in Bray and she's a native Shetlander. I don't know too many of them. <laughs> And uh, so, um, yeah, so getting grounded, what's that all about? Um, well, um, last year, or maybe it was the year before last, I think it was last year, um, Beth Halford, as you know, she, um, the SBC at Land of Joy before Julie came on board, um, which is, she's been really fortunate to have Julie and Daniel and Jenny and everyone at Land of Joy. Um, do, uh, she wanted to create some universal weekends, some weekends that were not uh, Buddhist, that were sort of, but were helpful to people. And so um, I helped her come up with about, I can't remember, maybe 10 different weekends. And I think Sean's gonna do one and Lou's doing one, and different people. And I wanted to do this one because um, for two reasons. Um, what these class is about, this is, um, the work is called Hannah Semantics, and it's created by a man named Thomas Hanna, who's been um, passed away about 20 years ago, and his wife, Eleanor Criswell, has continued with the work. And as I was telling people earlier today, she actually works with animals and horses now as well. And, and, um, And what this work does is it um, re-educates the brain and its relationship with the skeletal muscle system of the body. And it's based on Moshe Feldenkrais's work. Maybe you've heard of Feldenkrais' work or Alexander taking these kind of somatic exercises. And it's um, helpful because it not only does it help us relax, and specifically what it does is clicks the brain back into the parasympathetic um, side of the nervous system. So our autonomic nervous system, which is the kind of like automatic nervous system, everything that happens in the body that we do not uh, consciously regulate, such as heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, um, all the functions of the body. But what happens in the in the um, in the autonomic nervous system is, is there are two two sides of it. There's what they call in science the um, sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And I think most of us are have, are familiar with the idea of the fight or flight response, which is what happens when we get stressed. And when we feel stress, different hormones, uh, cortisol, and different um, kind of hormones go are released in our body. And when we experience stress over long periods of time, um, we sort of get habituated to living in that mode. And so um, since, I mean, even before COVID, I think most of us are very familiar with hanging out in that department. It's kind of where it's difficult to sleep and we get a bit restless and we get triggered easily into different situations and, um, you know, there's anxiety, it's easy to have anxiety in short, kind of the more um, uncomfortable emotional states are readily available to us. And what happens with these exercises, I mean, there's other ways to do it as well, but um, we, it switches the brain back into the parasympathetic work of the autonomic nervous system. 
which is uh, where we have rest and ease and calm and healing and rest restoration. Um, and one of the things these exercises do when done over time, not only do they um, make us, help us become much more familiar with this more restful, calm, open state, but it also heals past injuries. So um, whether it's been a physical injury, like we fell off a horse, we fell off a ladder, or we you know, broke our leg, whatever, but quite often with a physical injury, we kind of, the muscles tend to hold around that. And so that, that offsets our whole posture and eventually leads to other issues. And of course, we're, we're also familiar with what happens with emotional traumas. They, we also um, can build up, I know in myself, even though it's nothing super huge, but just almost like being a kid in school, we develop certain postures that are no longer uh, suitable to us. You know, like we maybe we're overprotected, you know, maybe we sit at a desk a lot. So it's very difficult to like open up the body because we're kind of habituated to this. And as much as we try, we stretch, we do yoga, we pull, you know, it's like the normal way of being is like this. Or sometimes some people you see, they're like this, you know, they kind of walk around like this. And so um, what these exercises do is they relax all that tension so that when you stand up, you know, your pelvis and your shoulders and your spine are just kind of the way they were when you were born. And you, can, you notice when you walk around, even after one session, that you just, it's, there's so much more ease in, in being in your body and your mind as well. So whether we just want to, you know, be a, just in the world normally, or if we're just, and particularly if we're just in meditation, you can see then how helpful this is for people who would like to meditate, to sit down and meditate, and their mind's just racing, da, 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 because it's because we're in our sympathetic nervous system. And when we try to force our minds to do that by breathing or counting our breath, or it's much more difficult than if we can familiarize ourselves with these, with, with this state of being. And um, what happens is, and what I'm hoping is, is that not only does it return us to this restorative state, but while we do the exercises, we develop awareness. And those people that are familiar with Dharma and because um, it turns out most people coming to this are, we, we know that one of the things we want to cultivate is awareness. And, you know, in, in traditional meditation, we do that by watching our breath or saying a mantra. Um, you know, we have an object of mindfulness and then we have the awareness function. It's the one that brings us back to our, what we're trying to concentrate on. But what's nice about these exercises is you develop awareness through movement. And that's actually the name of Moshe Feldenkrais's book. It's called Awareness Through Movement. He wrote it back in the 60s, I guess. And so, so then what, what the, the benefit is, is that then once you do the exercises and you restored yourself to this calm, healing state, then because it also helps you develop awareness, it helps you feel when you're leaving that when, when, the, when the, the fight or flight response, you know, you, because it's, we're more habituated to that, we want to jump into that one, you know, the slightest little thing, you know, the telephone rings, we need to write emails, you know, I get that way just writing emails because, you know, I have to write so fast or something. So you, you feel yourself with that awareness, you know, you, the tendency to go there and then because you have awareness, you can just go, oh no, oh, I'm just let it go, you know. And so that's the other thing that's, that's a benefit to us. And, um, and so then what I feel is not only does it heal trauma, but it allows us to then be more open and with ease to cultivate the mind states of gratitude, of connectedness, of compassion, of empathy that allows us to slow down and listen when someone's talking to us, to, to be more caring, to be not only of ourselves, but others, to have that space in our mind and I can't think, I mean, I don't think, except maybe when we're in wartime, there's no time like now where we need to be cultivating uh, these capacities. And um, I think I mentioned before too, that I was um, at my friend Kerrigan's house and I was reading one of her books by Brene Brown, who's a, a researcher. And she had done studies uh, with 
people who who experience you know anxiety insecurity and um anger uh, uh trauma and in her study she she um found that what helps people more than anything which i found quite interesting is a feeling of being connected to others our interdependence and compassion and you know being to empathize with people that's what it heals our sense of isolation our sense of loneliness our sense of uh, anxiety and um, so it just seems like this is a good time to be offering this and and the other thing that she discovered well I mean it's kind of obvious but it's nice to have scientific backup was that the most fundamental uh, mental state to cultivate to heal our sense of isolation or anxiety you know these things that are just kind of rampant today is gratitude so we can work on these things but it's easier to cultivate them when we're no longer in a stress state so um yeah so when we find after i talk we'll probably just start a little bit with that and um so there's just a couple more things i need to mention and um i hope that's clear enough now that some people heard it four times <laughs> it's probably pretty clear um and maybe i get better at saying it uh but there there's one thing to know about these exercises is it's not stretching it's not yoga we're not trying to um, get stronger we're not trying to be, become more flexible or you know stretch or pull muscles um, it's mostly about reconnecting the brain with the muscles and so um, less is better and I know a couple, one woman was saying she was having some problem with her shoulder and so the thing is you can just do this if you are feeling any pain you can go very very slow and very very little you don't have to do much to, to, to recalibrate re-educate the nervous system which is what we're doing here and so you can i mean i may be doing the movements when you see me doing them i'm doing them to a point where before it's stretching but if yours has to be very very small that's okay it's not like you're trying when it's not yoga and it's not calisthenics but the interesting thing is we do become more flexible and more strong by doing them and uh, the other thing i need to explain is this um this word this concept is called pandiculation and uh that's what the movements it's a name that describes what these movements how it works and so there's kind of three stages um, to get the most benefit and and what it is is i'll just use my arm as an example okay so the first one is you 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 engage that muscle so that's engaging this whole set of muscles right that lifts my arm so that's the first bit and and you know if it's easy to raise my arm i'll do it here but if my arm gets this is just an example gets stuck here you can just leave it to here it's not like you're trying to get it all the way up here you just want to bring the movement to where it still feels comfortable and because the thing is you engage the muscle that's the first part the second part is we let go we let it down very very slowly as slow as possible because this is what's reconnecting with the brain and some of these exercises you'll see we we move our head with our hand and the idea is we don't uh, engage our neck muscles and then the last part is just resting because when we rest that's what allows the brain to be reintegrated so so to get the most out of it that's go as slow as you can as you're letting go and then we'll stop at the end of each exercise and the other thing that i i'll do with us is that the, the, the more we can rest in between the deeper the trans you know the deeper the change the deeper the healing and so i'll start us off by just um lying down and um getting into a more relaxed um like the corpse pose you know so um i think that's everything have i said everything that i've always said i've been saying <laughs> somebody can tell me i think so um so but it's always good to have our intention because the intention is what uh, makes an action more powerful. So let's just stop for a minute and everyone can develop their own personal intention.
So for me, um, one of my wishes, I suppose, is to um, have create more, what can I say, uh, to be able to listen more deeply with compassion to others, to have more space in my mind, to be able to uh, recognize when I'm not being compassionate, um, to pay, be, have a deeper connection with my inner self, and to strengthen that sense of interconnectedness with others, and to uh, make the body and mind more serviceable. This is me personally for my meditation practice, and to uh, generate that, that inner world of gratitude that makes the life much easier. Yeah. Less expectation. And of course, we always are developing the open heart for that. So I'll start us off lying down. And um, yeah. Yeah, we also want to be healing ourselves of anything that kind of impedes our state of peace and authenticity and well-being. So I'm going to lie down here, and everyone can lie down. Okay. I think you can see me still. Okay. So Faye, I think you can hear me well enough. You can see me okay. Maybe we should yeah, can hear you and can see you can yeah. see you good. That's good, that's a bit better. Okay, so we start by just establishing this place of rest that we come to between each of the set exercise sets. So let's just lie down. If it's more comfortable to have um, a pillow under your knees, <clears throat> that might be helpful for some people if, they're, if their back isn't comfortable, just lying flat. So just breathing naturally. We uh, turn our attention inward and just listen to our breathing. Feel the soothing nature of the breath. You can either breathe slower than normal or just breathing naturally. Palms can be up. <clears throat> hands by the side and just we just allow ourselves to feel the support of the floor which in turn is the support of our mother earth just feel our body sinking into the earth
start with noticing how your heels are on the floor. There's no right or wrong with these exercises, really. It's just uh, we're wanting to begin to feel our bodies from the inside out. So just notice how your heels are on the floor. Maybe one foot turns out more than the other. Feel your toes, maybe wiggle your toes. Feel your calves on the floor and maybe one touches more than the other. Your knees, thighs. As we feel ourselves just sinking into the floor. Notice our hips, our buttocks muscles. Is one hip feel like it's touching the floor more than the other? Maybe one slightly higher than the other. Notice the, the low back. How much of an arch you have? Do you feel your low back? Is there a lot of space there? And the back itself is just one part of your back feel like it's on the floor more than the other one. And the upper back and the shoulders is one shoulder higher than the other one. Does one shoulder blade occupy more space on the floor? Just get to know our bodies. There's no right, wrong, just who, just who we are. It's all good. Feeling the arms, elbows, the back of the palms. Are your hands, fingers open? Maybe close your fingers and open them up. Just wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit. Notice the head. Is your head slightly cocked to one side? How does the neck feel? Is the neck relaxed? Feel the crown of the head. Eyebrows are relaxing. Cheeks. Maybe open the jaw a little bit, a few times, move from side to side. Teeth stay open the whole time. We don't keep our teeth together. Feel your tongue. Is your tongue resting on the bottom? Just notice you maybe move your tongue around, let the tongue relax. Throat. Throat muscles. Sometimes it's helpful to feel the upper palate, the back of your mouth. Feel that opening, relaxing, kind of opens up the sinuses. Almost like you have the space of about a ping pong ball in the back of your throat. Allowing that whole area to relax. And again, we listen to our breathing, the inhale. Where does the inhale go? Is it, does it fill up your chest first? Does it fill up the belly first? Do both the belly and the chest fill up? Do you 
feel your, your breath in your back. You actually breathe into the back of your lungs. Top of the lungs. How do we breathe? We like, we can imagine our body's hollow. And as we breathe, we're breathing in a healing light that fills the body with this light and warmth. Clear, nourishing air. Again, to the, return to our supports. You can feel first the support of the earth, our mother, who gives us everything with the sun, support of the sun, the sunlight, the warmth, the fire element. Just breathing in ground, earth, fire. The water element of the rain, the rivers, the lakes, the oceans, all the water in our bodies. Air, oxygen, space, you know, all of that nourishing air. And then space, how we feel when we have a long distance view. And Feel how that nourishes our, our heart, actually, to feel the open space. So we can allow ourselves to feel that connectedness with this planet and the sun and the elements that nourish us through our food and our water. And then the nourishment we can breathe in from all of our families and friends, the interconnectedness between this little Zoom friendship we have this weekend, this afternoon. And if we each of our Zoom friends, think about all of our friends and family, and connect all of us that are here together this afternoon with all our friends and family. They connect with their friends and family, and their friends and family, until soon, every human being on this planet, we are all connected. We're never really alone. It's just a mindset. If we allow ourselves to feel this connection, it's there. We're always interconnected with caring, love, compassion. And when we allow ourselves to feel that, we are instantly connected. It's like the It's like the internet connection, but it's deeper. It's the compassion highway. So as we breathe in, we can breathe in that feeling of connectedness and love in the form of light. It sends all down through our body as we then stay connected with the body, the earth.
And then before we begin, we, one more step. We just recollect our gratitude. The gratitude for the earth, the beautiful skies, the seas, the mountains, the rivers, the birds, the flowers. We just allow ourselves to be nourished by that gratitude. They're always there supporting us. Our friends and family also always there supporting us. Isolation is just illusion. Just breathing in, relaxing into the floor. And as we begin the exercises, we move in a way that is soothing, doing it slow enough to feel the breathing nourishing us. It's almost like an inner massage. We need a lot of soothing in this day and age. So if we can do it for ourselves, just really want. So we start the first um, somatic exercise is with the knees bent and the feet are flat, flat on the floor, just a little bit away from our hips. And you notice immediately it shifts your pelvis up. So as best we can maintaining this sense of listening to the breath, feeling the body from the inside, kind of floating in a sea of gratitude. The first exercise is just simply to rock the pelvis forward and back. So that means we push the low back into the floor as the pelvis rocks forward very gently. And if you want to do this with the inhale and exhale, so you would inhale as you forward and then the pelvis just rocks back very gently so that the low back comes off the floor. We'll do this five times. Very slowly massaging that very low back. It should feel good. Pressing it into the floor with your feet and then just relaxing back. Paying attention. I think I didn't mention that when we do the exercises, it's very, but, but what works the best is if you're definitely aware and paying attention of every moment of the movement. So then you just let your legs slide down and you go back into a resting place. Are we listening to our breath and sinking into the floor? One of the things I like to do is, as I breathe in, in this 
floor space. I imagine that it's like my breath is almost like a vacuum cleaner and it's sucking the mental, you know, thinking processes, the verbal mind, just it brings it from my brain into my heart. So it's almost like in, in my belly, my navel region, as I breathe down there, it, it brings that energy from the head right into my heart, which opens up the loving kindness space, which allows me to rest in that gratitude world. Your thoughts are just coming and going and don't really have much control or grab or weight or trigger. So every time I breathe in, my awareness drops into my belly and my chest, into that heart space. And as we exhale, we just let go and feel that breath pervading through the body, arms, legs. And if this doesn't make any sense to you, it doesn't matter. Just relax in between. I'm not trying to give you something to do. It's better to do less. So then the next one, we bring our feet back up and we're going to do the same movement with the hip. This time we add the short, the neck. So we're going to take our hands and clasp them together and then place them behind your head like we kind of normally do sometimes, and you put the clasped fingers at the base of your skull. And what we do is, as the pelvis comes up and the low back goes into the floor, we're going to use our hands, our arms, to lift up our neck. And we're just going to look down at our knees. And come up as high as comfortable. It's not about stretching. Just come up a little ways, and then as, as we exhale down, you just slowly, slowly let your head come down as the pelvis goes back into the opposite direction where the low back comes off the floor. And then we just relax down. So we'll do that five times. We can inhale as we come up, slowly, slowly, with, with awareness. And then relax down. Oh, I forgot. And when you go down, the nose you, you, it goes back towards the wall behind you so that your chin goes up and you stretch your neck in the opposite direction. So the head goes back. And then the nose comes, the chin comes down towards the chest. And after it comes towards the chest, then you lift up and your pelvis comes up. It all works together. Very slowly. And so as your back begins to arch, so your neck also arches. So your whole back can come off the floor. Just your shoulders and your hips on the floor. And then you go in the opposite direction as you press your your low back into the ground and your back goes into the floor and then you lift your head up. And don't worry about the inhale and exhale, just do the exercise. It'll come naturally. And then stretch the other direction. It's a bit like a cat in the morning. You know how cats stretch? Stretch your back like that cat. If you only have time in the morning to do this, you can do this before you get out of bed. I think it's one more time. Last time we arch, and then just come back to the neutral zone, and we lie down into our grounded state. Just 
sink into the floor. Sink into the heart. If the mind stays alert. <clears throat> The mind is open and clear, but letting go at the same time. And remember to keep the face and the neck and the jaw relaxed. Now for the next one, I'm going to turn over. We do this one. It's the only one we do on our tummies. We're going to turn over. And we can start. We can do it on the right side. We'll start on the left side this time. So you're going to, um, you can see what I'm doing. We, you put your uh, left palm down on the floor in front of your face and you put your hand on the on the back of your palm so your, your palm it's palm down so you, the left side's looking to the right and you're going to take the right side of your body and your hand is down by the right side and the right foot and you know we keep those straight we keep our right and Right, right hand, right arm, right leg straight. And we're going to lift them up with a slight stretch towards the other wall while we use our hand to lift up our head. So it's like this. So you breathe in and you come up. And you keep those legs straight. You don't bend your knee and you just come down slowly. You do that five times. And when you come down completely relaxed, And down slowly. Up. And down. Up. And down. Keeping the jaw relaxed. And down. And then we do the same on the other side. So the, the left leg and the left arm come up as the right arm brings up the head. And then we go down. And we left. Down. 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 Relax. You can either relax in your stomach or turn over. It's kind of fun to change what's in your tummy. Mm. If it's uncomfortable, though, turn over. Maybe I'll stay this way for this one. Let's just relax a little bit more on our backs. Again, listening to the breath. OK, 
Okay, for the next one, we go back to the position where our knees are up and our feet are flat on the floor. Just a little bit in front of our hips, the same width apart as our hips. And again, we're going to take, we're going to take our right hand and put it behind our head. And as we lift up our head, we're going to take the left knee up towards our chest. And as, as we do that, we take our left hand up and touch the, the side of it to the knee. And as we pull the knee towards us, we, we twist around and have the elbow go towards that knee. You don't have to go all the way. It's not about that. You just go as far as is comfortable and then come back down. And remember, as you come back down, you want to somehow it's like the, the, the hand holds the head and it's almost like a little bit of resistance as you go down slowly. So we do that four more times. So we're breathing up, and twist, and then slightly come back down. And we go up again, twist over. Just go as far as is comfortable. There's no stress or strain in this. One more time. I mean, you can just go a tiny bit if that's what's more comfortable for you. One more time. And then down. And then we switch to the other side. <clears throat> Down behind the head. <clears throat> right leg comes up. And twist. One more. And then just completely relax. Listening to the breath and letting go. Okay, now the next one, I'll turn around again. It's getting kind of hot. <laughs> so the next one is kind of easy. We lie down, and hands outside like a T. Our feet are back up and with the bent knees and the feet on the floor by the hips. What we're going to do is we take both knees over to the right side. I'm sure you feel like this stretch. As you take them to the right side, your head goes to the left and you turn the left palm over so it's palm down. So, you, so your left hand is palm down, your right hand is palm up. And then you just switch and you just go over to the other side as you turn the left palm up and then the right palm goes over. You see how it works. It feels kind of normal. So you just keep shifting back and forth Going slowly, and you can feel a nice massage in your hips, those piriformis muscles, and getting the low back. Nice twist in the shoulders, neck. Let's go back and forth. Keeping the jaw relaxed.
And then when you finish, we just go back to our unground rest. And then for the next one, we turn over on our right side, let the right arm goes straight out like it was before, and our legs, our bodies as straight as possible, our necks and the straight. We're going to take the knee on top, which is the left knee, and put it at a right angle to, to, the, to our bodies. So the knees out, like you can see. And then Take your foot, lift your head up and put your foot up just so you can see the top of your foot and then put your head back down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our left hand and wrap it around the top of our head so that we grab our ear with our fingers. And this um, engages the side muscles here, the oblique muscles that help us stand up. And so we're going to, so what we do is, as we lift our head, we lift the foot, the knee stays on, the ground, so the up foot that we can see. We lift up our head and we look down that foot. And then slowly lower your head and your foot down to a rest. Do it again, again, five times. And down. And up. And down. And just turn over on your back and rest for a moment. And do the other side. So we turn over on the left side. And the, the left arm is straight out in front. The top knee, the right knee is bent. And you, I can look down and see the top of my foot and my head's on the floor. You kind of have to tuck that shoulder underneath to make it comfortable. So you, your left shoulder's tucked under. And you take your right hand and reach over the top of your head and grab your ear. And make sure that left leg is out straight down below. And then we just, again, we just lift up our head and look down at that foot as the foot raises up and back down again. Rest at the bottom. Up again. And down. Up. And down. And down. And down. And down. I think that's fine. And you turn over and just rest again. Next one is a series for the legs. So we'll start with the right leg. 
And we're going to take, we're going to just bend the bend the right knee as we take the bottom of the left foot and place it up as far as we can on the right thigh. Sorry, got it wrong way. Right leg goes up on the left thigh. And then you just slide your foot back down again. Bring your foot up. And back down. Up. Then we're going to go the opposite direction. So we'll take, we're going to bend the knee inwards and the foot goes out to the side. So it goes up as high as you can on the side and back down. Back up. And down. Change to the left leg. So you just bring it up on the inside of the right leg and comes down. Again. And slowly, so it has that soothing kind of sensation. Right out to the side, it goes out to the side, and down. Again. And then we do both together. So the, the the, the soles of the feet face each other as you come up, and then you turn your legs around, out, and go down. So first the knees go out, and then the knees go in. And the feet go out. I think if you have knee troubles, it's good to do this more. You can do a little bit more. And also, just like to note that I've also seen um, it described um, the beginning of it is instead of just doing the foot by itself, you know, each one separately, I've also seen it taught where you bring it from the very beginning, you bring it up and out and down. But I'm pretty sure I was taught this way. Okay, so that's that. And then the last one is um, we're going to bring both knees up together. So it's a bit like parallel skiing. Both knees come up together and to the side. So you bring it up to the side and down. So you bring your knees up as high as comfortable um, and you turn over. So you turn over on your hip. And it's, it's, it's helpful if you put your arms out to the side, it kind of keeps a little more balanced. And if you want, you can do that same thing where you look to the left as you go to the right. It just sort of feels more natural that way. Right? And then just rest. Hmm. Just take a moment to notice how your back feels on the floor. It feels any different than when we started. 
I know mine does after four sessions like this. <laughs> mm. Just let your breathing do what it wants to do. Not uh, any control here. And sometimes you might want to take a big breath. It's good to, if we can just uh, let go and allow the body to heal itself. Next to the last one, we sit up for this one. So turn over on your side and push yourself up. We come up to a position where our, our knees are bent and um, we're sitting with the, the right leg in front with the foot pulled in towards the groin and the knees out to the side. And the other knee is around the back, as you can see if you look up and have a look. Yeah. So uh, this is a twisting, it gets the, all the twisting muscles. So how this one works is uh, the first thing we do is, um, <laughs> is we take uh, the hand up, so it's with the straight out right in front of us, that's right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what side you do first. And we're gonna take our right hand and put it behind us. And what we're gonna do is just motivating from this hip, the left hip, you push that hip forward and you turn around and you look behind you just notice how far your body stretches. And please don't overdo this or overstretch it. Just go how far. So you look to the right. Oh, look that way. Yeah. yeah, look that way. Yeah, twist okay. around to the right. Yeah. You're twisting to the oh, left. Twist around. Yeah. Yeah, twist around to the right. It's just because you're watching me. Yeah, <laughs> right. so that's right. So you twist around to the right, sorry, and yeah. come back. And they can twist around to the right. And you come back. Look around to the right and look around. Let your head twist us too. So bring your, let your eyes and everything. Let your eyes look around. Everything goes around looking behind you as far as you can without any uh, strain or stress. Look around. I think that's five. And then we come back. Let's just do one more. And then we're going to do this again, only this time. The body is going to go around to the right, but our head's going to go to the left. So let your body go, just like we did. We're going to take the body around to the right, but instead we look the other way with our head. And then when we come back around, we look to the right with our head. So, so we're going in opposite direction. So the body is going opposite direction to the head. So you go around, body to the right, head to the left. And then body comes back to the front and head goes around to the right. Time. Put your arm down, and then uh, with this one, we put uh, you can take your left hand and put it on your right knee, and we're going to twist the body around to the side. We don't have to twist very far, and this time it's quite interesting. Um, we're going to take our chin up towards the ceiling, but our eyes are going to look towards the floor. So the head and the eyes are in opposite direction. Then you bring your chin down towards your chest and your eyes look up towards the ceiling. So then eyes go down as the head goes up and the eyes go up as the head goes down. 
It's not that easy to do because you try to do a gradual shift in the eyes following the shift in the head. One more time. And we come back to the front. So they, then again, we're going to twist around again one more time to the right, twist around to the right. And this time, we're going to take the left hand, just like we did on the floor the other time, and put it around the head. Okay. And as we're twisted as gently as we can, like if you can sort of look back at the around as far as you can look. And then we're going to, with our hand, we're going to move our head. So you're going to pull your head towards the left, towards the left shoulder. Then you're going to take your hand and put it on the other side of your head and push it, push your head towards the right shoulder. And then you put your hand on the right side of your head and pull it towards the left. And put your hand on the left side of the head and push it towards the right. more time. <laughs> Let me just come back to the front. <clears throat> and then one more time, pull your hand up and just twist around and just notice if you can twist further than you could the first time. And then come back. And we change. We have to do this all on the other side. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> So the, um, you can make it more open. So the, so the left foot is in the front and the left foot is in front of your groin and then the right leg twists around the back. But if it hurts, don't do it. <laughs> Take that foot and put it back here. No, that, yeah, that's right, that's right. That's, now you got it. It, it might be easier to sit on a pillow. Is it easier to Yeah, no, that's all right. A lot of flexing, right? Okay. Right. Okay. okay. So um, I'm sure it's completely normal. Like it's okay. So now we start with the hands up here like this, and your your left hand's on the floor, and you just twist around. Have a look behind you, and then come back to the front. And then again, so you look, twist around to the left. And come back and twist around to the left and come back one more time or two more times and one more time okay now the second time is when the body goes to the left and the head goes to the right so the body goes around to the left, but we look towards the right. And then the body comes back and we look towards the left. Yeah. I know at some point, I, you, you know this is doing something to your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more time. Then you put your hand down. Then we can take this right hand, put it on the left knee and look around. So we're somewhat twisted to try to stay up straight. And um, so this is the one where the chin goes down towards the chest and the eyes go up to the ceiling. And then the, ch the chin goes up to the ceiling and the eyes go down to the floor. I want to just keep alternating. Chin down, eyes up. Eyes down, chin up.
we'll come back to the front. Let's take a breath. <laughs> then we twist, but one more. We're gonna, then we twist around one more time to the left. And this is the one where you take your right hand, put it on top of your head. And so then we pull the head towards the shoulder and then push it away. And back and forth. And we come back to the front and we just slide down. There's only one more to go. And we just slide down and relax one more time. <sighs> Move around a bit if you need to. And the last one is a repeat of what we did before. So we bring our knees back up, our feet on the floor next to our hips, our hip width apart. And this is the one where we're going to take our right hand and put it under our under our head. This one where we twist. So as we we lift up our head with our hand, and we. The knee starts to come up towards the chest. As it comes up, our left hand clasps that knee on the side and we bend and we twist as if we're going to touch the elbow to the knee. And then we come back down. Again. Come down slowly. Change sides. So the right knee comes up and the left elbow goes towards the right knee. Again. Last time. And then we just, again, go back to our grounded state. And again, notice how your back feels on the floor. Notice if there are any changes. Just feeling the body from the inside. Listening to the breath and relaxing.
need to move a little bit, that's all right. Just breathe however you feel like breathing. And just let go. tell ourselves I'm good enough just as I am. Close just by remembering how the sense of connectedness to the earth and the sun and all the beauty of the earth, mountains, trees, lakes, rivers, the air, and just seeing the earth, holding the earth in a healing space. You can almost feel compassion for the earth. The traumas that have been done to the earth. As we feel compassion for all the beings. All the hurt that everyone experiences in their lives. And again, remembering our little Zoom group that's connected, and we're connected to everyone we've ever known, whether they're alive or dead. And they're connected to everyone they've ever known. This huge weave of interconnectedness. Just remembering that on a subtle level, we're always connected, we're always with our friends. And no matter what superficial rifts go on between us, there's still a deep love. Because it's our nature to love. It's our nature to feel compassion. Our nature to want to listen and care without judgment for ourselves or anyone else. It doesn't mean we don't discern and have wisdom, but just accepting everyone on their basic level of needing happiness and care. this level of open-heartedness, we can wish for clarity of thought, good decision-making, as 
that attitude of gratitude. goodness in ourselves and all beings. It's almost like those little strings of spiderweb light going out and touching everyone. Except no one feels alone or isolated. And all the fears that cause the greed. And by thinking, may, may all beings be healed. May all beings feel their open, compassionate hearts. May we all find our best way to be in the world that nourishes us so that we can feel comfortable and nourish others. Just with what we do, doesn't matter what we do, so long as so it doesn't harm anyone. Nourish that creative spirit that we need to be well. Allowing the body to heal itself. grand circle of compassion in this life, in skillful means. So I think our Zoom time's about up, so maybe we can bring our knees back up and roll over on one of our sides and push ourselves up. And uh, I think we have time for a couple questions. And I want to thank Man of Joy and Faye and Julie and Jenny and Ray and Pishu and Daniel and everybody there. And Beth, it was her idea to do this. And um, Sort of, it was our, it was a dependent arising. And um, I think I forgot to mention in this session that this is called Hannah Somatics and was developed by Thomas Hanna, who is a student of Moshe Feldenkrais. And he died, I think, maybe in the early 90s, but he was quite a, a he was, a, I think he was, a, started out as a therapist and was part of that movement in the late 60s and early 70s where healing from the body, healing with the body became, seemed to be a, a faster way or more effective way to, to heal traumas. And I studied with his wife, Eleanor Criswell, who continues the work. And she lives in uh, Northern California. 
where she not only works with people, but with dogs and horses. So uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. So I wasn't here all by myself. <laughs> and uh, does anyone have a quick question or anything else we need to say? I think, Faye, you have a question in the chat, right? I have a question for you, Paula. Um, the question is, <clears throat> when I put one leg behind, that side of my back goes up. What can I do to correct this? Yours, basically, Mercy. You mean in this one, when you put the leg behind like that, you know, when the, when the leg, you mean when we were doing the twisting one? Who's ever asking? Is that when you like when it goes up? So that was mean? A, an email question. Oh, well, I'm not yeah. doing anything, but it must be that one. It's okay if the hips up. It, it doesn't have to be on the ground. I mean, mine's that way. Yeah. So I mean, if you if you're if you're sitting, if you're doing this, you know, and if you, let's see, where can I? And this is off the ground, you know, if it doesn't go down like that, it just means that these muscles are a bit tight. So you can do it like that. So, but, and the more you do this, the more they will loosen up. So the, I, I don't know if I show this, so what happens in this one, it starts with this hip and you, it rotates around like that. So you're actually rotating your hip back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's like that, it's, that's the movement. But if it doesn't go all the way down, that's okay. You just go down as far as you as you can, you know. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Questions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, anybody else? Um, I just like to mention too that uh, we've had I've had about four or five of my friends come and join and. They want to do this more on a regular basis. So if anybody else would like to, I don't know about Land of Joy, but um, you could just contact me from the Brave through the Brave View website. It's just braveview.org because we might continue to do it if anyone is interested, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we can talk about it later with Land of Joy. But anyway, I just thought I'd let, let you know that they were very enthusiastic about it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, especially I think people who spend a lot of time writing at desks, it's very helpful, mm -hmm. um, you know. So, um, yeah. Anyway, anybody else? Otherwise, uh, maybe our time. It's just nice to see the faces. I'd like to see everybody again. Maybe I can do that. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although when I stop the recording, I'll put it onto gallery view, so maybe it'd be easier to see people yeah. to say goodbye once I stop the recording. Yeah, it's so nice to see my friends. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Zoom was going to be terrifying, but it's actually kind of a nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, we, if no one else has a question, I will definitely keep you informed, everyone, of what we decide with Paula about maybe a regular mm. somatics. Uh, so just check your emails and then Paula, we offer from the end of joy side. <laughs> yeah. so thank, you, thank you. I put it around your neck in the name of everyone. <laughs> thank you so much for agreeing during this course with us. I think uh, everyone who joined can definitely, we here at Land of Joy can say we are more grounded. So thank you very much. And I think it's a brilliant idea actually to do a So let's see what we can do. And uh, yeah, thank you for using this medium with us and <laughs> the way how we can connect. Thank you for everyone for joining in. And like I said at the beginning, I think it's quite important for all of us to keep in mind that we are not alone and we can connect through these um, teachings with each other or these meetings and courses. And so thank you. <laughs> And for your support, um, also financial support for Land of Joy and for Paula, because that really, really helps us to find those ways of connecting with each other. So, yes, and we hope at one point we can see you live here again, Paula, and everyone else. So let's really put that in our prayers and aspirations. And until then, stay healthy and well and take care. And thank you. Thank you very much, Paula, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.